Hi there, I'm Lara from 5 out of 4 Patterns and welcome to Sewing School Measurements Part 1. You will find in Part 1 of our measurement series uh, how we measure for women. In Part 2 you will find how we measure for children. In Part 3 you will find how we measure for men. For this video and this post alone we are just going to be talking about how we measure for women. So the first thing I'd like to do is just have a little pep talk between me and you. As a woman, we have there's a lot of pressure on us to be perfect and uh, always be in like weight loss mode. Um, and we tend to hang on to things that don't fit us anymore and what have you just for the hope that maybe we'll fit, in, fit into it in the future. I know that I have a closet that has a couple things in it that just should go. But what I want to talk to you, to, to you about today is, are your measurements. It's important when we're sewing for ourselves or for other people that we're honest about our measurements. A, because it fits better, and because the fit will be right, we will feel better in the garment as well. It's okay to be okay with your measurements today. Even if you wanna change those me measurements for the future, it's okay to be okay with those today because in the end, you will have a better fitting garment because you were honest with yourself about your own measurements. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that we've gotten the pep talk out of the way, let's talk tools. We've got our free PDF download right here. Whether you enjoy the written word or you enjoy video tutorials, you both need this free PDF download. Why you ask? Well, I think you can tell by looking at it. This is a chart for where to write down all of your measurements. It has the na a place for your name and um, and the date of the measurements as our you know measurements change, just you know real life and all. But. Uh, uh, I know my measurements change anyway, and it's got everything from your waist length to your over bust, full bust, waist, full hip, and high hip measurements. Each pattern that you make will require a different um, type of measurements, whether you're making pants or you're making a top or whatever. I think you know what I mean. So keeping this handy is really important, and I will link that in the description box below. I will link to the posts, I should say, in the description box below, and you at from 5 out of 4com and that way you can download your own uh, chart here. Uh, but let's start now, now that we've gotten our PDF out of the way, we are, let's talk about our other tool. Our other tool is our tape measure. Now, if you're anything like me, you buy the cheapo tape measure at Joann's. Well, something came across my Facebook uh, timeline the other day that uh, I just had to have it. Um, and that was a new tape measure. And it's pretty awesome. I always buy the cheap ones and you know, they last a little bit, and they, they do okay. But this is a high quality one. And it's probably the highest quality tape measure that I've ever owned and I love it. But what's great about it is not just that it's a high quality tape measure, but it's got this fancy slider on it. I don't know if you can see the slider. Um, it goes back and forth. And it makes measuring yourself and others, but definitely yourself a whole lot easier because on one end, you've got your slider and then on the end, you've got a snap. And that snap comes around and it snaps right into the back of the slider. And now you can see we have an adjustable circle. So that when it comes to measuring yourself, we've just made it so easy and I'm telling you, this is worth every penny and I will link this in the description box and in the blog post as well. So we've got our tools and our PDF download. It's time to start measuring. We're going to start at the top of the list and that's with our overbust. And just as you guessed, we're talking about the bust area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our tape measure and we're going to take it behind us. Okay, and you can see how I've got it right here under my underarms. I'm gonna bring this around and I'm gonna snap it in. Now, you're, you know how to use a tape measure. You're just going to go bring your end together, and we're going to tighten it. Now, one of the things that I've learned is that if I stand like this and take my measurements, keep my arms up and take my measurements, I can get a much uh, smaller measurement than when I put my arms down in a relaxed state. Did you see it move? Let's try it again. Look right here. Oh, I'm fine. My overbust measurement is perfect. Let me relax. And there it moves. It moves a lot, actually. So it's important that we take our measurements in a relaxed state. So if you have to put your arms up to get this around you, make sure you're putting your arms down to get your final measurement. Once you've gotten the measurement and you are uh, in your relaxed state, you're gonna unsnap it. And then you're gonna write that measurement down next to where it says overbust. If you're using a standard tape measure, as we all have, you're going to do it just like this bring it up and bring it over under your arms 
okay and see I got it tight but if I put my arms down oh there we go we want it snug but not tight and we don't want it falling off the back like coming down off the back and kind of sagging in any spot just snug and I have the exact same measurement here so I can hold on to that look at it and write it down okay the next measurement is full bust just as you guessed the fullest part of our bust so we bring our tape measure around the back and I have a microphone pack on the back of me so this is a little more challenging for me but you want it to be level on your back okay and then I'm gonna bring my snap around to the fullest part and then I'm gonna tighten it now I can keep my arms out but if I put my arms down I'm getting a more natural more accurate measurement and once I've done that I unsnap it and where the red line is is where my bust is where the bust measurement is so I'm gonna write that down our next is the waist measurement now sometimes we get confused and we think that our waist is like the uh, where our waistband sits on our pants I have a five-year-old who loves to wear her pants super low so I have to accommodate for that when I make her pants otherwise the crotch is too low on the uh, on the pants themselves but that is not her actual waist measurement that's just where she likes the waistband to sit so don't be confused by that our natural waist measurement is actually the measurement of the smallest part of our midsection now if you have a hard time finding that a good way to find your um, natural waist measurement is to take a piece of stretchy elastic like a quarter inch elastic and put it around your waist and tie it off not super tight okay and tie it off and then do some side some side crunches and that elastic will move and wherever it settles is the smallest part of your midsection and so that means that's your natural waist so in order to do that to measure that we're just going to come across here make sure you're not sucking in and your posture is the way you normally stand um, I could manipulate this to make my measurement seem much smaller than it is but I'm gonna have an ill-fitting garment and that is not what I want so make sure it's sitting just at that at that smallest point and relax and then you can undo it and there you have a waist measurement that is accurate now let's jump to full hip now this is exactly what you think it is the fullest part of your hips now it's the fullest part so it's going to come across your butt and around okay so let's try that you want it to remain as level as possible as you're doing it just snap this in here for you okay and then we're going to again be relaxed don't stand strangely don't you know don't do anything weird just relax and take the measurement and with this it's perfect because I just unsnap it and there it is there's my natural measurement now uh, now we have the high hip after we've done the full hip we know our full hip is about here the high hip is just a couple inches up um, from the uh, from the low hip so it's right at your the top of your hip bone probably so you're gonna do the exact same thing not tight but not too tight and you're making sure you're in a relaxed state so that you're not you're not manipulating it too much and if you've got extra belly it's okay to to um, accommodate for that don't don't feel weird about that that's part of your body and you will find a way um, like I have to make things fit in this area um, you know just like everybody else so we we've got that and we write that down our last uh, measurement is waist I'm sorry is waist length there it is waist length and that is from your underarm down to your nat natural waist so we determined our natural waist already the smallest part of our midsection so we're gonna start with our underarm and then we're gonna come all the way down to our natural waist you might need to do this in front of a mirror just so you can see a little bit better because right now I can't see it all uh, but that'll be helpful or having someone help you with it uh, so there we have that and then we write down that that measurement and right there you have it you have your over bust your full bust your waist your high hip your full hip and your waist uh, your waist length measurements and that's all there is to it for a women's uh, for women's measurements I hope you will take this information and I hope it's useful to you and I, what I really hope for you is that you will be honest with yourself and honest with your measurements and be okay with the body that you have today and make a really beautiful well-fitted garment I will see you next time for part two of Measurements on Sewing School. Bye.